I'm Tara. I'm Ryan. We love Disney movies. So we decided to watch them all, from Snow White to Frozen 2 and beyond. Each episode will watch a different Walt Disney Animated Studios film and tell you all about it. Did we like it? Does it hold up? Who's our favorite hero? Or villain. We'll give you history and fun facts about each movie. And sometimes we'll invite our friends to watch along with us. So put on your tiara. Or your evil crown. And join us on our adventure. This is Tara and Ryan's Princess Diaries. Hello, listeners. <laughs> <laughs> we are back. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, this movie we're about to talk about, we've already talked about it, but we had a little snafu with the audio. We did, we did. So we are we are doing this again, hoping to capture the same magic. Uh, we are here with a very special guest, our guest from our Jungle Book episode, um, which if you listen to, I'm trying to like remember everything I said, so I'm saying you said it again. I was just so awesome, and I was like, you were so great. I had person nothing that you've ever had, and it was just, it was so golden. Nothing but nice things to say <laughs> about our our returning guest Marjorie, who's here. This is kind of like your third episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is what is unique about this episode, in addition to the audio snafu, is Ryan and I have never seen this movie, yes. and Marjorie has. This is our first one we've gone through and and not seen, which and, I think is pretty impressive up to this point. And I I wanted to say. This one is one of the ones that I think it kind of has a little bit of a bad reputation amongst the Disney films. Um, so I was curious, Marjorie, why are you so excited? You were you, this is one you're like, ooh, I'll do dinosaur, and and frankly, um, we had to we had so many other guests who wanted to do dinosaur, and I said no, <laughs> it has to be Marjorie. No, I'm kidding. Um, and yeah, we nobody were, else we wanted were ex- to do it, right? Exactly. So we were kind of like. It was like that. I think you were like, oh, I want to do Dinosaur. And we were like, oh. Absolutely, uh, you can do Dinosaur. Thank goodness, someone did. So what about this movie uh, made you excited to come back and do this episode? Okay, it's, are you ready? Yes. Dinosaurs. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) (laughs) No, I love dinosaurs. Uh, I always have as a kid. I had books and I would draw them. As an adult, I play any game that has dinosaurs in it, pretty much. I just thought of something, because I like dinosaurs too a lot growing up. And I want to put this out there, because this is a thing that that was a big part of my childhood that I don't think we've talked about, mm-hmm. because I don't know anybody else. And I've never. It's one of those things where it's like, I could probably just look it up right now on Google, but I never think to do it. There was this book I read before... Dinos- before Jurassic Park came out where it was like the whole thing was like there was a dinosaur theme park dinosaur zoo and this kid went on this train and then like dropped his camera and jumped off the train to grab his camera and the, and the train took off and it was this whole adventure of him getting back and it was like he was running away from an allosaur a lot it was, I think it might, I don't think it was called Dinosaur Train because I think that's an actual <laughs> that's show that's now like show. that is an actual show and it's yeah. not terrifying as that sounds it's, it wasn't terrifying, but it was a book on tape, so I could read along while listening oh, to it. Yeah, and it had like every you know had char- had actors doing voices. Mm-hmm. It had um like sound effects and that sort of thing. I am I am reaching out to our listeners out there. If anyone knows the name of this book or has read this book, I would love I would love for somebody else to share this memory mm. with me. But I remember I I listened to that tape a lot. Like if we found it at my parents' house, I would grab it and take yeah. it. But anyway, um. Tara, uh, I, I th- uh, you, we talked a little bit earlier. You weren't as big a dinosaur fan, but you did love The Land Before Time. I love The Land Before Time. And I mean, I feel like all kids have like their favorite dinosaur. So mm-hmm. for me, it was the Triceratops. I liked that one a lot. And I liked the Brontosaurus, which was then the Brachiosaurus. And then we realized the Brontosaurus yes. is back. We looked that <laughs> yes. up. Oh, I forgot we the missed that. The Brontosaurus is back. The Brontosaurus is the Brontosaurus back, everyone. The is back, baby. So, uh, it's like the McRib. Scientific. Yeah, the McRib. <laughs> Pluto, I mean, full Everything circle. Everything is coming back. Uh, did we, we now? We we didn't find out the brontosaurus when we were growing up was the one that was it was an apatosaurus and a brachiosaurus and they just kind of put them together, supposedly. But now they're like, no, there actually are brontosaurus and they're different from apatosaurus because blah, interesting. Blah, 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 blah. We will do more research on this and put it up on the Facebook page. Get it out for you guys. But the brontosaurus is back. We're very excited about that. Mm-hmm. My favorite dinosaur was the ankylosaurus. Was the uh, four-legged herbivore that had the big ball, the ball at the end of its tail, it was like a tank, mm. and I like that because as we'll go into on our Wreck It Ralph episode, I'm a big fan of like gentle giants who are like, ah, leave me alone. I don't know why. I just I find I find that very interesting. Um, like, I mean, 
Where are you, where, where are you going to say, Tara? I would say that you maybe <laughs> sometimes are have those characteristics. Oh, okay, maybe, fair enough. So. I'm not that big. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, so that's my favorite. Uh, Marjorie, what is... Well, I've tried, I was trying to remember what you said yours was. It, was, it was a very deep cut. Yes. The oh, is that the one that... That has feathers and everything. It does. It's one of the so it's it's one of the first uh, dinosaurs they discovered um, that had feathers, and it is a bird-like dinosaur. So I think in this book that doesn't exist, but I made up, is <laughs> he he gups off the train to pick up his camera, and he sees an Archaeopteryx, and he goes to take pictures, and that's when the train takes off. Ah, is he goes a little deeper into the the park to do that? Hmm. I know it's one of the ones where it's like they jump off and they've got wings and they fly down hmm. to the yes. to the to the yeah. ground. Yeah, they're super cool. Uh, so I have some facts before we get into the movie. Okay. Uh, before we get into two thousands dinosaur, just about dinosaurs in general. So when the early Chinese in the in two hundred sixty five A.D. found them, they assumed they were dragon bones. Mm. I, I need you guys to act like this is the first time you're hearing I, that you were. I mean, so <laughs> to be fair, it wasn't the first time I heard it. The first time. Oh come on! <laughs> I knew this, but I love them. I love these dinosaurs. Uh, in Europe, they were thought to be uh, the bones of giants and other biblical creatures. Uh, in, in the early, thank you. In the early <laughs> 1800s, they actually started identifying them as large, extinct animals. In 1841, Sir Richard o- Owen coined the term dinosaur, which means terrible lizard. Mm-hmm. And the first dinosaur, Tara, was extremely excited to hear this fact the first time. Mm-hmm. The first American dinosaur was discovered in Haddonfield, New Jersey. Yeah. Now, where's Haddonfield compared to like Tom's River? You don't know. That's fine. You don't have to look at it. I, thought, I didn't know I'm it was a like bad North New or Jersey South. Well, I know. I I've heard of it, but yeah. I sometimes don't. I'm also terrible with geography, so I sometimes don't exactly know where things are in relation to where I am. <laughs> Let's go over the things you were talking about earlier about the the impetus and the and the the, the idea. That yeah. Sparked so this. the movie I think came it's out fascinating. in 2000. Yes. It got a 64 percent on Rotten Tomatoes, but it was originally conceived by Phil Tippett and Paul. Verhoeven. Verhoeven. Phil Tippett worked on Jurassic Park and was the quote unquote dinosaur wrangler and which was a big meme that went around a while ago that said it was a picture of a dinosaur wrangler. Uh, Phil Tippett, everyone's like, you had one job, Phil. <laughs> um, and Paul Verhoeven, crazy enough, is the director of Robocop, Basic Instinct, Starship Troopers and all those kind of oh, like wow. overly violent, schlocky, great. I love those movies, but great movies that you never... The, the line from him to a Disney film is very strange to me. Yeah, but then when you kind of think about what this was supposed to be, in 1986, it was based on... They wanted it to be a darker, naturalistic film about dinosaurs. And apparently Phil had a short film called Prehistoric Beast in 1986, and that's kind of where it came from. So... uh This project underwent numerous versions, multiple directors, and very different trajectories as to what it was going to be. And in 1994, Walt Disney Feature Animation began development and spent several years developing the software to create the dinosaurs, which we'll chat about here in a little bit. Um, The other thing that is interesting to note here is most of the backgrounds were live action and filmed on location, and then everything else was, like, added to it. So I want to make sure we get back to that. So I just wanted to say that here. Uh, I'm nodding my head as if people can say, I'm like, yes, 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 yeah, yeah, I want to get back to that. But (laughs) in order to separate it from Land Before Time, it wasn't going to have dialogue. So initially they weren't going to have dialogue for it. Eisner insisted on dialogue. Then one concept was, well, then maybe they'll do voiceover for dialogue like Homeward Bound. So that was kind of like another version that they were tossing around. Mm. Then uh, they originally, they were planning the opening shot showing the meteor moving through space. And then that was cut because apparently I've not seen Armageddon, but the opening shot of Armageddon. We, you got it. You love Armageddon. So the opening shot of Armageddon does that with the meteor. I guess it goes through space and like you kind of watch it. Well, I feel like it's kind of like the opening shot of uh, Independence Day. Oh yeah. Where it I guess shows you in space and it shows and you the see, moon. Yeah. yeah. So then they kind of changed that. Then there was also an original script that was greenlit and set to go into production with effects master, David Allen, who did a lot of stop motion in conjunction with live action, and that version was canceled when they found out that Jurassic Park was using full CGI creatures. So Jurassic Park actually started off using 
there there's there's some uh, test footage you could find of of the T Rex as stop motion. That was their original oh, idea. Oh, interesting. Went, well, I we didn't know we that. Can do this. That's yeah. super cool. What I find really interesting is they let a lot of other media influence where they went with this. You know, there are so many different versions. And so I found that kind of fascinating. But I do want to circle back to the software as well as the live action backgrounds. Because mm-hmm. we were chatting about how uh, one of the most recognizable backgrounds is Angel Falls, which is in Venezuela. But they also filmed in Tahiti and Hawaii as well. One of the reasons that it kept getting delayed is like, so, you know, they, they did kick around stop motion as being a thing. And then at one point they, they thought about maybe puppets. Um, which I think we discussed. And, and that just makes me picture yeah. like Jim Henson dinosaur film, which I don't hate. <laughs> I don't hate that either. Or the well, dinosaur show, about... remember, not the mama. Yeah, yes. that's, that's true. Right. I mean, that was oh, another like bleak. I you know, love that You remember that how they ended? Oh, the meteor came, right? No, they just, the Ice Age came. Oh. And they were just in their basement. Right. And they were like, I guess we'll just wait it out and see what happens long oh like, my gosh i forgot yeah. that that's, that's how that so ended depressing. <laughs> that bad. is yeah. on disney plus now as well oh yes. i might rewatch that there i go. loved that as a kid um i think we talked about how like a 1985 dinosaur puppet movie would be charming yeah and 2000 would be like it'd this be, is weird yeah it'd be yeah. like an art project like an art like it'd be like it wouldn't be a blockbuster summer tent pole i feel like it'd be more of a like right so mm-hmm. so so the technology wasn't there yet, right? And so they kept mm-hmm. pushing it off and pushing it off, um, um, among other reasons. Um, but then uh, once they they really decided that they could do this, you know, with like Jurassic Park being out and all that stuff, they 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 went for it. But they had to make a lot of their own software because off the shelf stuff just couldn't cut it. And so they made their own software for building these dinosaurs, for adding them to the backgrounds and and adjusting all the lighting, and for even like the jiggle of their skin like it's ridiculous what they did (laughs) skin jiggle is a very important industry term (laughs) jiggle there's a lot of jiggle in this movie and not oh okay yeah uh, viewers watch for the jiggle in some surprising ways too (laughs) well do you think that that's because like you said they they built it remind me again they started with the bones yes right so so they built out the skeletons of the dinosaurs themselves and then on top of that they put muscles like actual you know how they think they could look and move muscles and on top of that they put skin and on top of that was the texture and then on top of that was the shading so they had all these layers to these you know essentially in computer puppets and all of that stuff kind of dictated how they could animate them which is something they do all like everybody has musculature like yes it it influenced the industry hugely we talked about this last time about Kong Skull Island. That's my like modern reference to what this is, which is, you know, putting animated characters in live action, having musculature. I feel like every making of of with a big CG character, they've always got the scene of them showing all the musculature and, and the, all the different layers. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's layers very like cool that. though to think about and that they were kind of the first to pioneer this. I feel like Disney I will say a part of it is probably because they have the money. They they, they have the, <laughs> sure. the backing right to experiment, but they did pioneer the same with Pixar when they were working mm-hmm. on that. You know, we talked about that in the Toy Story episode. But it is fascinating that a lot of the things that people use every day in the film industry now, Disney had a hand in creating and shaping what that looked like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and the so the I think they acquired a studio or two. I I don't specifically remember, but I do remember that the um, group that they formed from that to animate the film they called it the Secret Lab. Oh, that's super fun. Uh, one of the things they worked with to shoot the real scenes was a, was a thing called Three uh, D Workbook was the name I think of the project that let them shoot uh, put real footage in with that. I'm I'm interested because looking at this for some reason I'm also watching this on YouTube, which is like. Someone got it. Someone videotaped this making of off of Disney, the Disney oh, Channel. Oh, that's funny. So it isn't the official making of. Right. It's, yeah. It's, they, they videotaped it off of Disney Channel. I Then they loaded it up on YouTube and I'm watching it like 240 or 320 or something awful. Yeah. So I, I was like, well, I guess these look like real backgrounds. I have no idea. It's the same thing when we did the Toy Story episode. I'm like, Toy Story really doesn't hold up. And then I watch Toy Story. I'm like, oh, this holds up way better yeah. visually than I thought it did. It still has, you know, it still looks antiquated. But, like, I was watching on this tiny little screen. Um, but some of the other uh, stuff they did is they came up with a uh, dino cam for uh, the kind of the reference of the Carnotaur. 
uh, and, and his perspective and how they did that. And you were saying, Marjorie, that they did it was a like a camera moving at thirty five miles an hour yes, on, over on a, a wire. cable wire. Yeah, and it, yeah. that's, that's oh, wow. something else that also impacted the industry, like the tech that they developed just to make that camera. <laughs> well, that isn't fast. that what don't they use that in NFL games? games? Yeah, exactly in football what games. I just that's thought what, of. Yeah, when when you mentioned it, it going doesn't have to go thirty five miles an hour though. Yeah, it doesn't have to go <laughs> quite that. No, fast, but I think but, it has to go yeah. fast. It has to be able. To, I mean, it has to be able to get, get out of the, the way players. real quick. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And all that, like it's, it's crazy. <laughs> I did not think of that. But um, the other thing was the the fur tool for the lemurs and the idea of like how do we make this? There's le- lemur. Did you know the the story? The idea that he's brought up by lemurs no i know nothing okay. about this film. well there's a bunch of lemurs in it one of them is played by matt casella who you might remember as beansy from the sopranos oh the one who yeah the one who gets the coffee uh, richie hits him with the coffee pot no and, it's and, not beansy oh. but i'm not thinking that it's somebody else it's um it's the the young looking guy who's in tony's squad for a while i'll probably cut most of this out because no one cares um <laughs> uh it's the young guy who's in tony's crew he's the one <laughs> lemur who's probably gonna say like hey like, yeah 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 um but uh i think i know who you're talking about actually yeah i've never seen the sopranos but i'm like no yeah yes sounds like i mean he's movie. he's an italian american yeah. like actor yeah. who does a lot of uh mob stuff so mm-hmm. he's probably he's, he's gonna be like hey aladar hey <laughs> um anyway uh but uh so he uh their fur tool they used for that um they looked at like making it wet like because they go under water they you know get wet and stuff mm-hmm. like that i think one of them goes in aladar's mouth for a while and so they're looking at that but then they're at the same time simultaneously they're looking at whenever the dinosaurs step in the real world uh grass how do you make the grass move because it's not moving really there yeah and they realized someone pointed out like well grass is it's just like hair just use the same thing. Mm. So they crossed over that tech. Yeah. That was very cool. Yeah. No, that is very cool. Uh, I have here too. I don't know if you came across the budget at all. I had that the budget was $127.5 million and it grossed $350 million worldwide. Number five in the box office that year. Uh, number one was Mission Impossible 2, mm. uh, followed by Gladiator and Castaway. Uh, we also talked about the different sounds. You had some things about the different sounds that uh, the dinosaurs make. And I came across that the Carnotaur, Carnotaurus. You got it, Carnotaur. Uh, was from Big Cats, was from Leopards. I'm assuming Tor has something to do with Taurus because he's got those like bull horns on the side of his head. Mm-hmm. That's my, that's my, that's your etymology uh, lesson for the week, kids. Um, anyway. Mm-hmm. Lemurs, uh, they were the their voices were uh, their sounds were capuchin monkeys and penguins, which I thought was interesting. Mm. And then the Velociraptors were a Chihuahua named Bad News Bucky, <laughs> which they had video for and yes. was a terror in the. I have we'll show that video, but just imagine any Chihuahua you've ever met. Oh, oh not I, always. I live with two. They could be. They could be sweet. I mean, some of them. I didn't know you were such a Chihuahua. I'm not. I just Leanne, who was on our Toy Story episode, her family they've grown up with Chihuahuas, and I feel like they had one of them was mean to me when we met them. Yeah, but some of them were sweet. Yeah, the other one was multiple times by Chihuahuas. Let's just oh, there you go. So so them being the Raptors is perfect. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it got me thinking about scientifically if there's if they have any idea. Of what dinosaurs may have sounded like. Well, and- Tara, I don't know if you've seen Jurassic Park 3, but if anything, <laughs> we learned anything from that movie, it's that Alan Grant can blow through a velociraptor skull and get them to talk to him. Is that what happened in that movie? Something like that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, I, so yeah, so listeners, if you've come across anything, if you are super in, I would love to know if there is, you were saying something about like, they I'm, can kind of assume from I, how. I, yes, I, I would be shocked if there's not any sort of footage out there of a like, some sort of specialist who deals with like, well, we know that their mouths look like this because of the skulls. So I'm going to go do some research for that and put it up on the Yeah, Facebook I would page. love to know yeah. that. I think that that's really Because I feel like, you, have you guys ever watched, there's the, the, the BBC or like Discovery will do things where it's like they really put a lot of time and work into computer animation of like dinosaurs and they'll show, do you know what I'm talking about? Those yes, shows? Walking and, with Dinosaurs. Do you remember that? Yes. It was yes, amazing. Yes, 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 yes. So good. But they'll, it's also, I don't know if it's that one, but it's the ones where you're watching and you're like, this is really interesting. It's like, and now the brachiosauruses are going to mate. And you're like, I did not need this to be part of this. <laughs> I mean, it's just like, 
It's just like this. That's when like I would be watching the show. My mom would walk in and be like, "What are you watching?" I'm like, "They, oh. they do have that in Walking with Dinosaurs." I do remember yeah. them having like, oh, was it a Diplodocus? Yes, just pooping. And it was yeah. like it was like it's the center of the frame, and it was just this huge yeah, dinosaur just pooping. And I was like, "Yeah, huh. that's the it's it's like every episode. There's one thing that you're kind of like, well, okay, I guess uh, it's science, but um, <laughs> but yes, we'll have to do we'll have to put some of those videos up." <laughs> Also, this is the fourth Walt Disney Animated Studios movie to not feature humans. And this one is kind of hard to redo. So I know. I'm going to just list them. Uh, but Ryan and Marjorie, earlier when we chatted about it, they did guess all three and they got them all right. But the other three are Bambi, Robin Hood, and Lion King. Did you get Robin Hood? I didn't get Robin yeah. Hood. Yeah, I got, I got Robin Hood. Okay. Which I was shocked that you didn't get right. Robin Right, I think Head. it's because I just assume they're people because yes, they're, I'm they're, so yeah. invested in those yeah, characters. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that makes sense. <laughs> uh, this also, this movie has the highest death toll of any Disney anime. <laughs> yes, we did talk. Now, I don't think any parents, well, I guess technically parents die. Disney yeah. has that oh, thing, is, right? Where the, where the moms like, die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or yeah. dad or both. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. We were we were doing we did Tarzan last week and we just got to the part where uh, I got to part editing it where our guest Bree says, "Oh, that's the best uh, Disney mom," and I'm like, "Low bar. Most of them don't are dead. Or, yeah, or don't have exist. lines, don't yeah. talk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but that's a good amount of what I had, Marjorie. I don't know. Do you have any additional facts on your end? Yes. Um, the fact that I wanted to bring up was around the time of this movie releasing, I believe, there's lots of articles and lots of like hype in the dinosaur world um, because they discovered a dinosaur that had, um, well, they discovered a, a fossilized heart of a dinosaur, which is a big deal because it's soft tissue oh, wow. and it usually doesn't make it. Yeah. Um, but this dinosaur uh, had a four-chambered heart, which suggests that it was warm-blooded. It's very cool. So That's up until cool. that point, Willow. they just Willow assumed the with a heart. they just assumed that all dinosaurs were cold blooded mm-hmm. because of lizard like qualities. I guess mm-hmm. there's back and forth discussion about it, right? So there was like, oh, well, they're lizards, right? So they're they're they were probably cold blooded like lizards, Got it. and then other scientists were like, well, they're huge. If they're cold blooded, like they would probably die because I th- I think one of the big differences, aside from the like, like the amount of chambers of the heart, is your metabolic rate. So cold-blooded mm. lizards and stuff have a metabolic rate that doesn't do so well in cold temperatures, and they kind of yeah. shut down a bit. So if you like, how do you warm a brachiosaurus if it's if yeah, it's not warm-blooded? You know. So, yeah. Anyway, that's interesting. It's really fascinating. This is making me want to get back into dinosaurs. It's, I mean, you should. <laughs> it's never too late. Do you ever look up primitive mammals like yes. giant sloths and mammoths so and stuff cool. like that? You went with your nephews to the uh the thing oh, the, here in texas the uh in waco there's the yeah. uh the mammoth herd that was mm-hmm, in, that they discovered that they preserved and That's it's so like cool. they found out all this stuff about the mammoth herd because there was like all these mammoths and like one camel always and, with and, like and they started like one camel this, just chilling yes, with be, bros. because they they started because it's so preserved they were able to find out well it has better it, it does one sense better than the mam the mammoths did so it was in every like mammoth herd, there's like one or two camels, like a small family of camels that run the perimeter and are like a warning signal for the no. mammoth. Oh. Yeah. We were worried she wasn't going to curse <laughs> on this. I, I um, dropped an F-bomb early. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have one more fact. Yeah, go for it. It's sort of a dinosaur fact, but just a general one. So dinosaurs were, are, were not the largest creatures on Earth. Oh, what is? What Do you know what falls Fish? into that? Mammals, specifically the blue whale, the largest animal to wow. have ever existed, is the blue whale. the The blue whale is bigger than dinosaurs. Oh yes, that's crazy to think about. Then, like the ones named like Titanosaurus. Oh yeah, I think they really did a bad job naming the blue <laughs> whale then. Because <laughs> well, so the to be fair, the whale doesn't awesome. have to walk on land and thus crush itself. Fair, you know. Yeah, <laughs> it's in water. Fair, it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred, hundred feet just, long, largest, interesting. heaviest. Wow creature to have ever existed as a blue whale and it's alive now people it's amazing yeah, yeah it still exists well, we so, well that's find... a question because oh, i'm not a dinosaur person so see you're the nerd in this i you know well now i'm like <laughs> trying to figure out how to phrase my question so whales did they exist back with dinosaurs no whales are mammals 
And oh, okay. there were some mammal-like reptiles that did exist actually very early on. And then dinosaurs kind of took over and so they stayed small. Got and it. they were able to make it beyond the meteor and mass extinction events and stuff like that. Um, in part because they're warm-blooded and they were tiny, right? So it's kind of hard to, oh, kill, okay. hard to so, kill small things. Yeah. Um, and, and then, then they, they evolved that yes, way. Yes, yes. Got it. Yep. Thank you. There you go. That's interesting. I never thought about that. Because there's big... I like big giant sea creatures from that, that era, too. But mm-hmm. Yes. There's... there. Oh, God. Like sharks? I've been around forever. Yeah. Sharks Mega- are probably the... Much longer right, than dinosaurs. Would we say that sharks are like one... As far as like the sea, like one yes. of the longest living... Definitely. And they haven't changed all that much, mm-hmm. which is wild. <laughs> all they do is eat and swim and make baby sharks. And that's it. Pretty much. They do it very well. <laughs> um, so other things that were around a dinosaur times that survived, snakes. Okay. Alligators. alligators yeah. Alligators, crocodiles, the, those those types of camions. Uh, what else? What else? I mean, birds, essentially, right? Like dinosaurs kind of turned oh, into them yeah. and they kept going. That's why, like, chickens are, like... Don't mess with chickens, man. And turkeys, so, yeah. wild turkeys, yeah. really? can like actually kill you. Yes, they're insane. Yeah. Wow. My sister thinks it's funny that I don't like ostriches, and I'm like, you're no. a fool. <laughs> 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 so the last thing we had a better kind of lead up to this the first time, but I'm just gonna bring. Well, it I'll like, I'll oh. give you the lead. Oh no, I said this earlier, but I'll this will lead into it. The highest death toll. So, Isn't that what led into it? Yes, because I was talking yeah. about how this movie is kind of a, a little bit of a bummer. In yeah. that it's like you're you're at the beginning of the extinctions of dinosaurs, which they found out that dinosaurs survived like theoretically 150,000 years after the extinction event. Not all of them, but some. Not of them. Not all of them, but a lot. Not, not like they they carried on for a mm. while. There was a That's there right. was a long time between the the handing off to mammals. It and, didn't just like yes. end everything, but. Uh, if you, this is just for anyone, uh, neither of you have been on this ride. The Countdown to Extinction, no. dino, <laughs> which is now Dinosaur, Countdown to Extinction at Animal Kingdom. Now, ha- were you on it when it was dinosaur themed or were you like dinosaur I movie themed so. or Listen, were you on I it before? I didn't sit to, to notice the theme. Like all I Got remember it. is just being like pants sweatingly scared. <laughs> and it was, this, this uh, ride was meant to be done a little bit on the cheap. So what they did is they brought in the Indiana Jones ride system, which is kind of like one ride, like there's a there's the thing that goes along the track, and then there's a separate piece that rumbles. So it's like having the Star Tours or Body Wars like thing Movement on, but on also a roller coaster along kind on a roller of track. Coaster. Got it. So you're already dealing with, and they do a pretty good job of that with with Indiana Jones because it's meant to feel like you're on like a bumpy road and stuff like that yeah. but this was just like we want to make people feel bad mm-hmm. so there's that's the cheap they they there's a lot of darkness in this ride to cover up not a lot of set dressing but also to allow them to put in giant speakers in places so they can blow the sound of the carnator or the carnator like breathing right in your face it's awful so the whole point is you're going back in time to just get Aladar or get Anaguanodon. I think that like in, they eventually say it's Aladar, but again, mm-hmm. I don't remember seeing. There's an Aladar statue outside of the the ride, but I don't remember seeing Aladar much in, in the, the ride. I think there's like a tree that's about to fall on you, and he like keeps it from falling on you. I vaguely remember that. I don't know. We're gonna put up a POV ride through. It's mostly black. I can't imagine. It's it's super <laughs> interesting, um, but. The Carnotaur starts chasing you through the whole thing, but you don't really see it. You just hear stomp, stomp, like in these huge speakers. So you're just getting, it's dark. Every once in a while, lights flash and you see something scary. It's just, it's, it's, it's not a pleasant experience. I've often talked about how I would see, I would go back on Alien Encounter, just get off the ride and go on it because I had so That one I loved, yeah. Even though it's scary. I'm going through this thing and, and it's, 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 it's the, the scariest moment is you get to the end and there's the picture taking moment. You know, mm-hmm. the picture when you're on a ride and it picture it's like Splash Mountain <laughs> as you go down, all that stuff. Yeah. So all of a sudden, lightning flashes, there's a, a five billion foot carnotaur right here next to me. <laughs> and it's me, my girlfriend at the time, and her friend, and we're in the front row, and I it is terrifying. It's like a billion watt uh speaker blasting a carnotaur screaming. There's an animatronic right there. I'm like, ah, but what was funny was we get off the ride and it's it's my my ex girlfriend's friend who is just screaming hands up just just terror like like in the old like 
monster movie like uh, posters. The She's classic, just like, ah! classic yeah, yeah, yeah. terror. Just screamy. There's my girlfriend who is putting her hands to her face, covering her eyes, and like diving for my lap to like hide from everything. And there's me that just has this like shocked look of abject terror, just <laughs> you know, just staring wide eyed. Which is almost worse than like actually seeing. I was like, like yeah, dead like, in the this eyes. Is like like this, I, like I was looking death in the face, and I knew it. <laughs> yeah. And um, I, I to this day my biggest regret is not buying that photo. But of course in Disney it was like a. 35, I can 40 picture hour photo. it. I can picture it. And it's, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, and it's got the frame. It's like, countdown to extinction. Uh-huh. And I'm just like, oh my God. Like, <laughs> it's like, nah, this guy went extinct. Like, <laughs> like are, are all my affairs in order? <laughs> like, I'm like recounting. You can watch. You can see if you look in my eyes, you can see my life like flashing. Before. Yeah. It was awful. <laughs> But if if we don't, ha- so we'd like for our if, our our audience, if you guys have heard it, let us if have have seen it. Yeah, if you've written, ride, if you've been on the ride, let me know if I'm exaggerating. I thought it was awful. I would I would go on it one more time just to see. <laughs> um, but after that, that's but yeah, be if you've time. been on it, uh, let us know on the Facebook page or give us a call seven zero seven yo t r p d one. That's seven zero seven yo t r p d one t r p d as in Tara and Ryan's Princess Diaries, and one is in we're number one, and then yo is in yo I have something to say. There's a lot of thought that went into this. this uh, um, AKA it was the only one left. Uh, mm-hmm. So I think we're good. We do you guys are we good to go? We want to re- watch this movie. I think so. Yeah, I think we're ready to watch it. We're gonna take the VHS out of the clamshell and stick it in the VCR. All right. See you on the other side, listeners. Well, hello, listeners. We are back, and I will say I was pleasantly surprised. I enjoyed it way more than I thought I would. Same. I I think we had, we talked about, Marjorie, I think you said you thought we had very low expectations for this. Which probably helped. <laughs> but, I, and, and I think there's a lot of dated stuff. It gave this me is, the feels, though. Yeah, there there's a lot of moments stuff where I really it gave liked me the feels. It. Yeah. Um, we'll go more into our, like final analysis of it but yeah and i think we'll just jump in i mean i'll kind of give the main points of the plot and we also like chat it throughout so i'll write uh, i'll mention things we mentioned the first note i have is dinosaur lips so marjorie take it away i have no idea what that this is about (laughs) oh okay so you you notice that uh ima who was the she's not a triceratops but she's something related to that yeah Um, yeah she does not have lips she's got a a beak like as her oh kind yeah of. but so iguanodons don't have lips like that right iguanodons also have beaks um and but because our main character is an iguanodon and they were like well we need lips to make him more expressive so they kind of made his face very like horse-like so if you notice when they would like make expressions and show their teeth, the inside it's not like they have teeth like you or I do. Yeah, it almost looks like a gums beak. a little bit. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a it's a beak like the whole front, top and bottom is is beak. That's and really interesting. That teeth, so. I'm excited for the next hour or however long it takes us to go through this because. I'm excited to hear Tara come up with every character's name. I know. I could not <laughs> commit the names to memory. I feel like we met them all at once. And so for me, sometimes that's hard when they kind of, you know, when we meet them in the herd, yes. we kind of meet them all at once. And even though like it said it in the subtitles, like my brain just didn't absorb it. But it opens up with Walt Disney Pictures and the castle. And what I really liked is it's burnt orange colors. It matches the colors of the film, which I thought was cool. Does the shooting star that normally goes like that go that slow because it oh, looked like the no. meteor to me. I didn't think about that. Ominous. It could. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I'm not sure. But it opens with shadows and we hear a heartbeat and you realize it's like the view from inside the dinosaur egg, yes. which I thought was also very cool. And it's Aladar, who we find out. Uh, one for one. I know. One for one. <laughs> Aladar. Uh, and then the title kind of comes over as we see these shadows of the dinosaur and whatnot. And... We kept talking throughout about the lighting and the color and the texture. And I wrote here, they look like they live in the environment. And I think, Marjorie, you said this, but I 100% agree. We talk about the water a lot. I'm always, I mentioned this in another episode, I'm always focused on the water because Ryan has shared with me how hard it is to make water in video games and in digital media. And a lot of this water is real. 
But then the dinosaurs that aren't real are in the water. And there are so many moments like that where they're in the real background and they just look like they've always existed there. I don't know how you guys felt about that, Marjorie. I know you kept getting excited about it. And I know I was like equally as excited. And I also just started noticing it more and more. I write it in the notes here, but there's one point where Aladar's foot like steps on these stones that had water on them, like from a stream or something. And that's real, but his foot's not. And just the way that they do that alone was really fascinating. And and that's like, I got excited about that when the film came out and I'm, I'm even more excited about it now because I kept saying this, like there's a lot of things that don't hold up. Right. But there are still shots and still like points of the animation where it holds up 21 years yeah. later. And that's so cool. Well, I think yes. you make a really good point about the shading. Like that was one thing I remember. So this is in our journey through the podcast. And, and it's, it's interesting. Cause I, you know, in talking to our animator friend, Carly, she, like she mentioned, like, she's like, you guys are basically doing a like history of animation. Mm-hmm. Essentially. And so yeah. I feel like a student yeah. of animation in a mm-hmm. way. But so looking at the, the last CG one we saw was Toy Story. Yeah. And so and we're separating out Pixar. Right. Right. From but, this. Yeah. We'll, we'll go back and we'll do Pixar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this, the thing that was interesting to me is like you said, the shading and everything. Cause mm-hmm. I remember when I went back and I watched, I, we, I started looking up stuff for the first toy store. I'm like, this is so bright. Like it's so like overlit and like everything, you know, and it's this kind of, that's kind of like the old look And this. You're right. There was, I will say that there were shots where I think they missed the, the, the mark. Yes. But there, the one I can think of the most particular is when they're, they're going up the hill at the end. Spoiler alert. You will get there eventually. But like, Crom, Crom. Crone. Crone. Uh, Crone. See, I, I'm Crone. over one. Um, Crone. Crone's disease was like... Um, <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> was just like he looked down on the group and it was like Nira and the rest of the iguanodons and everything and they looked really flat and like not good and then when they cut back to Kron he was well lit and everything I was like oh man like I would just like to study those two shots yeah. because it was like this one yeah. didn't turn out well this one this looks one really did. good Crone. Yeah. Crone. 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 Yeah. so yeah there's a lot of moments throughout the film so for that alone I recommend yeah. You know, checking it out if you're super fascinated in those aspects of the film. What we will say, we didn't mention at the beginning, it is rated PG. It is very dark. I don't know how much children would absorb in that way, but yeah. like it was very dark and very sad. And we we had a corpse count um, <laughs> and of dinosaur corpse that you see. There's at least six and there might be one or two more because then I forgot that the next beat of the movie, we s- went as the, this egg is still not hatched. The, the carnage carnator. Right. Yes. Yeah. The carnator comes and stomps the eggs. It, it misses one and then it kills the that, mother and the other dinosaurs that were around. There, was right? it the mo- was it the guanodon mother? Was it just ran. another? Uh, the mom yeah. ran, so it was another like a, dinosaur. But you see it like grab the dinosaur and mouth. the dinosaur die. Yeah. It's, 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 the thing is, is, I think they're trying to have it both ways. They're in trying a way to make it realistic. Work. Yeah, they want it to look like you're watching a nature documentary. At yeah. the same time, they're also giving like personality to creatures you're going to see die. And I'm like, I don't like this. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> so uh, that would be the warning yeah. um, as far as watching it with children go. And I'm curious, listeners, if you have children out there who have seen it, I would love to know what their reactions were. Because again, children process death and grief and everything in such different ways, I think, than we do as adults. So mm-hmm. I would be interested to know that I, I I have a nephew who is three and loves dinosaurs and he understands that they no longer exist in their bones now right yeah I would not show him this film yeah yeah, yeah I think he would be too young <laughs> I, yeah. I think sure, putting no, the yeah. personality for sure, for sure. on it like yeah I think yeah you you come attached. it's like watching Mickey and Minnie and Goofy and then every once in a while Pete goes up and kills one of them it's like <laughs> yeah you, know, you become attached like, to these characters yeah. the emotions with them yeah, yeah for sure so we see the egg. I do think this is a cool way of storytelling that we see the egg travel. So not only do we get to see lots of different species and different types of dinosaurs, but different species of animals. And, you know, I wrote here, I kind of forgot dinosaurs aren't real with the landscapes going back to that. In <laughs> yeah. this in this montage, you kind of forget that they're not real as in they don't exist anymore is right. what I mean. Because they make you feel like 
they're real and they're alive in this world, mm-hmm. in our world. So it's this is a really cool moment with that. And then when they fly over the water, that was another moment when when the I don't know is that a pterodactyl that has it? I don't know if it's a pterodactyl, but Some it's definitely you said a pterosaur. Yeah. Some so type of pterosaur. Which is what I'm gonna start calling you. That's yeah, I'm, I'm into that. Pterosaur. Hey, pterosaur. Uh, no, but. <laughs> But yeah, when that pterosaur flies over the water, that's probably one of the most breathtaking moments yeah, in the film. Yeah, agreed. I thought the same thing. And then they do a close-up and it kind of... It's again, I was. I think at this point I was judging the movie too harshly. and then I. Well, this was also myself. in the beginning yeah, too. Yeah. 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 Uh, and then we hear the lemur voices are the first voices we hear. So at this yes. point, no one has talked. The lemurs talk. And then this is where it's very clear to see some things that didn't hold up. And a lot of the yes. close-up shots of the lemurs. The don't old necessarily lemur hold kept up. making this face that was animated very badly. Yeah, <laughs> like, like, yeah, it looked like yeah. his face was going to keep. It looked like uh, Gary's mod, like you know when they do animations <laughs> yes, from Gary's mod, yes. and they just yes, it's like he does. Oh. You, you don't. It, it, I don't know it, but that's fine. It's just a thing where you can like very easily like take pictures and move stuff, but then oh, the okay. animations you get are like. And they're like very like people do really quick stuff on it for memes. That's what it looked like. It yeah. looked like it was just gonna keep going there and was, stretch there out. Yeah, a lot of that too. Like in the animation, it it varies so wide, like wildly in this movie, where you have stuff yes. that's much more conservative, and then you have stuff that's just like really pushed really far, probably beyond where they should. And I almost feel like, and this is also why I love this movie, despite all the flaws. It's kind of just like, a what can we do with this animation tech? Like, yeah, what I can think we well, do? And that's, yeah. I think that's where really we are in, yeah. in the history of this tech. Yeah. Well, and is wasn't that the same with Pixar? Instead of them doing a short, they just right off the gate did toy. Was it that one that they experiment? We read that that with something that Disney experimented with. And now I can't remember if it was Toy Story or another movie. It might have been another movie where it might have been the rescuers but they they developed some sort of tech where they were just like instead of doing something small with it they just went and did a full feature yeah. and that's maybe, what they did the here yeah. yeah i can't remember Definitely. what film it was now because it wasn't toy story because they'd done a bunch of shorts yeah but so I it was do something else but they, i i think there was a, the thing the reason why toy story and those work better is there was a lot less of like that was we're using this tool to do basic to do traditional animation techniques not Let's see what this tech can yeah, do. Yeah, but I think in general, Disney, even when they're experimenting, they go big. Like, we've noticed yeah. that in the past. You know, they don't, like, test it out as much, and they're just like, okay, we're going to use it for this. Yeah, and th- this film was definitely an experiment, and it was it was a big risk. And they take a lot of mm-hmm. risks in kind of a lot of departments in the film. And I, while not all of them, certainly not all of them work out, and even more of those don't hold up now that we're 21 years later, there's something just playful about it that i really yeah, appreciate. Yeah, yeah. yeah agreed so as the dinosaur egg hatches we get a very tarzan vibe where you know this mother lemur wants to keep the dinosaur and it's cute and it's kind of cuddly and the dad is like dinosaurs are dangerous we have to get rid of it it's a little like simpler because i feel like in tarzan the whole thing was she had lost a child yes and agreed this just, and this but it's just like still, let's take her on but the the father in tarzan is still very much like he's gonna grow up to be a man and that's men the, are dangerous that's her her father though right like that's grandpa grandpa i don't think that's oh yeah. maybe yeah, yeah i'm yeah, just yeah, i'm yeah. just double checking yeah. and then he picks up aladar and aladar and pees all over him <laughs> yeah and, it's a big and that hilarious pee joke laugh. comes back at the end oh my god that's uh, how they ended on is them ryan's all... favorite <laughs> ryan's favorite i was literally like is that is he peeing like i yeah. was just like but they bad. they uh they basically put it on is it the grandfather and be like, well, if you want to get rid of it, you have to be the one to get rid of it. And yeah, so he, he can't was going to drop it. it over the side, but which is kind of dark. It. He doesn't yeah. do it, but it is like you get rid of it. OK. And it's like we're it's like, you know, it, it, let's talk about infanticide, you know, like, yeah, it's, yeah. It's just going <laughs> to just drop this baby out of the tree. So then we see Aladar all grown up and it is kind of an, a fun way to show that it looks like he's chasing the lemurs to attack them and then they're playful with him and. We can see, again, like the Tarzan, th- the Jungle Book thing, that same idea of like, you know, species that shouldn't get along but do, right? And well, so this happens Yeah, and here. I like the scale difference too. And I also yeah. like, like, he's- He's been, very protective of them. Like, they're not, there's no like, I like that A, there's no like, oh, what, a, this guy's, 
not one of us. Like they're yeah, all like that in Tarzan that there's yeah, that for there's a none while. Of that. Yeah. Now there it's obvious that he's not one of this, but they've incorporated that into the the pack or the tribe mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah. Where they're like, Okay, you obviously can't be part of the mating ceremony, but everybody you'll be a you'll be a part of it in a different way. Yeah, you'll help us get like there. Family. The, and yeah. let's just talk about the mating ceremony for a moment. Hey, here. ladies! It just is like awkward. a weird thing. Is that and what the it was like on the boardwalk in New Jersey? In New when Jersey, you go by the yeah. beach, come with like, "Hey, <laughs> ladies, come with the love monkey." Oh like. my gosh! Let's also talk about that. The women give them a flower. Did anyone like think like, about like the, that? Like, like, the like oh, are you? <laughs> yeah, like a bachelorette thing, or even like a like I'm giving my self to you with this flower like i don't know oh my goodness i just i think it was a really weird choice i i don't think like if they wanted to to show that like Uh, i think what they wanted to show is that the one and i don't zinny zinny we're calling zd now because he's italian yeah baked zd kind of awkward and it seems that this isn't his first time trying to mate and it didn't work again and Aladar's kind of a loner because there is no one for him to mate with. I get that, but I just feel like it was really awkward it's and all very drawn out. M- yeah, it's it's none of it really incorporates back into the larger story. No, like no. we get that story where a- Aladar meets the white hot lightning chemistry <laughs> between him and Nira, but like we didn't need all this like pretense of cuz cuz the whole thing it didn't seem like he was like I wish I could find someone. It was just his mom being like it was like it felt very heteronormative. Like yeah, it felt he was very just like, like I have a place. Everybody in the family. has to be pretty yeah. typical yeah. of Disney for a long time, and I'm glad that they finally broke out of that. Well, yes. I think you could still do it. Like we could still have the lo- the I'm going to put it in big fat quotes <laughs> love story between him and and Nira. But like we didn't like we didn't we didn't need to see this like intro into it. I think it was cool enough to do something that was him trying to integrate into the tr- into the tribe yes i i think like him and showing that he's part of the family unit but i think you could have done that in so many other ways yes. but then also all these people just found their mate and they're off you know yes. like falling in love let's put it in those in quotes and then a big and then and the they all explosions die. yeah and then we realize that none of them survive <laughs> yeah Lemur uh, Island and is so we'll, gone. we'll go to that next uh, the explosions <laughs> on the ground both of you i think came across in your research yeah. that those were real. So mm-hmm. if you want to talk about that, I think that's all I have. I think you okay. were saying that they like were an actual at a... like park or garden or something. I think yeah. somewhere in L.A. I think. I think. I, I saw some videos for it. It's pretty. It is. Yeah. Interesting because it's you know just like a making of of a regular of like True Lies or something. Yeah, where they do like this stuff. Up. Other stuff mm-hmm. too, yeah. Yeah. No, and they did look very real. But this is where I said. It was really sad watching the characters, watching these beautiful meteors going through the sky before they started exploding. And they're like fascinated and they're curious with them. Before, and- before we bring that up, can I, I, I think we're going to talk a little bit about 9-11 here. So let's, we'll cut. I you. wasn't going I to. I was going to. Okay. I think it's important. So I think if you, when Tara finishes this, if you don't want to hear about that stuff, two, three minutes ahead. Okay. okay. Yeah. So I just found it really sad because... They're looking at it very fascinating, and it is very beautiful at first. They don't know what it is, but we, the viewer, know what it is. So we're watching them, watching the unknown, knowing that this is the meteor that comes and, like, kills almost everything in its path. And, and that is just, like, really tragic. Well, and I don't mean to make light of it, but you just say watching the unknown. I'm like, watching the unknown! Uh, I like the, that was but, yes, me doing the Frozen unknown. Too. Yeah. Okay, Frozen um, but... I do think it's important to say that this we were watching it, and it's we are f- recording this close to September 11th, but the twentieth anniversary, the twentieth anniversary of it. And but I think it's interesting to think about that's something I think they would have thought about not doing after this time because it did feel like very traumatic and 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 watching like you said like what are we watching and and, and it, it could happening. potentially be triggering. I yes. you know I was not at Ground Zero, but I very much like many others was watching it on television not knowing what was happening and so i think whether you were there whether you were watching it on television it has this weird thing of again like you see something happening but you're not really sure and it does have that moment well i also i'm also looking at it from a like how they script and write animated movies pre and post yeah yeah this was was pre yeah This was definitely, I mean, even maybe now they would do this movie again, but I think now, I think there's such a sensitivity to those type of things that 
I think they would make it like Well, I could I could see that moment being triggering. Yeah. Folks. I think it's triggering just on any oh, it's, yeah. sort of like um disaster you were a part of. It's traumatic. Yes. Like yeah. yeah. But I, I just think it's interesting. We'll go more into that because like I said in the thing, like Lilo and Stitch does some, is coming up and they do some changes because of of nine eleven. Yeah. We'll go into that stuff. So uh so as this is happening, they realize very quickly once they like hit the ground that like they need to get out of there and they try to get the lemur family, the the like tribe that mm-hmm. is them with Aladar all together and they all kind of get on Aladar's back and when he jumps in that water, that was another moment that we talked about we're not sure how they did it. Yeah, when Aladar's swimming in the water and the water is real but Aladar that, isn't, that's that was another probably, moment that like is really so cool to watch. That looked really good too. Yeah. That's up there with the pterosaur. And that's where the foot on the rocks, that that moment mm-hmm. I was talking about, it happens kind of here. Um and so that's when we look over, as Ryan mentioned, and they look back to the island that they were once lived on that is just like in flames gone. and yeah. everyone that they just made it with is yeah. gone. Because they even call out. They even call out to see if anybody calls back and nobody calls That's back. That's what I'm saying. If you've lived through like an earthquake or a, t- a tornado or something, I feel Any like kind of disaster. fairly triggering. Yeah. Yeah. I want to be clear too. Like they, these characters that survived didn't mate with the <laughs> with anything oh, else. Oh, fair enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> They didn't what? They didn't meet. They weren't the ones that made it. Right. See? Yes. So I think there's an abstinence lesson to be learned. Uh, from oh, my this movie God. Well. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, so then the next thing is they're kind of just walking and everything's very desolate and they don't know where they're going. And it's, you know, they're now like no longer on this island surrounded by water. They're like mm-hmm. on the other side of it, kind of where Aladar came from. And the raptors. This is the first time we see the raptors, and they bad gang news, up on Bucky. them. Yeah, bad news, bad Bucky. Bad news, Bucky. Yes. And God, uh, so when the raptors, that's also a very intense moment. They like bite onto Aladar and are like kind of hanging on him, and he's like trying to get off of them. And then he comes into the dinosaur migration, and it's almost got a stampede feel. They're not running, but it has that feel. Did we want to talk about? Sorry, the the flipped claw. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah. Uh, for anyone, there's there's a there's a there's a oopsie in this part <laughs> um, where the raptors are attacking Eldar. Uh, it's specifically the scene where you get a close up of the raptor face and claws, and he kind of mm-hmm. tilts his head and then goes rah like towards the screen. Um, I think the claw on the right hand of the raptor like is flipped upside down, so like and the listen, whole it's... finger is like twisted yeah mind. that can happen to someone who worked on mass effect andromeda and it went out with where there's a, a very important cut scene where she holds up and her guns facing the wrong way <laughs> Oops. i didn't know that yeah well it's not in there anymore we fixed it in a yeah. patch <laughs> <laughs> can't patch a movie though yep. yeah well but... they did they, they they patched cats remember that oh Did you yeah. ever hear that story no. they sent out a version a, a second version because there was a part where like uh Judy Dench's hands were human hands and not cat hands. <laughs> Did so you not know that? Yeah, hilarious. yeah, yeah. They they sent out a new a new print and were like, "Could you please show this instead of the other?" That's one? hilarious. Oh my anyway. god. So twenty. So years later, they started patching patching, patching movies. movies. <laughs> uh, but he kind of they come across all these dinosaurs and it has that stampede feel, even though they're not running. But it's very much like it's the first time Alador's any seen anyone that looks like him Mm -hmm. it's the you know it's the first time that i i'm sure the lemurs have seen anyone besides alador aladar sorry door i don't know where alador i alador you yes uh and it's a very intense moment because you've got all these dinosaurs he's kind of like walking under them almost getting stepped on and we we get integrated into this pack very quickly i feel like this way there's two things i want to call out about well, in general about the movie, but, like, you can really see it play so well in this scene. One is the music. The yeah. music in yeah. this film is so good. It is very good. Uh, and, and two, the scale of things. Mm-hmm. They, so you yeah. have the lemurs' size and their scale of things, and you had small dinosaurs. like. Then you have kind of the Aladar scale, and then you have Baleen, who just, yeah, you, like, just yeah. walks her across up. over him, and the music's playing. And he's, like, underneath her. Yeah, yeah, and it's just, like, this intense moment of, like, holy crap. 
Baleen is yeah, Baleen is a brachiosaur he meets at the kind of in the back of the pack along with Ema, who's played by Della Reese. Yeah, and, and Baleen the, is the voice of the maid from the live action. Yes, I don't remember. The, I don't remember the actress's name, but then and Earl, Earl. Yes. Who's like <laughs> A dog? A dog, And, th- and this Dino? is something I want to talk about. I don't know if Marjorie wants to talk about it. But oh, Marjorie, I wrote a note later Marjorie on. Marjorie did so. go. Well, so I, go, I go, why does he act like a dog? And Marjorie said, <laughs> I go, I go. if this is a movie with a bunch of humans and one of them just act like a dog, we'd all think it was very odd. And Marjorie said, no, everybody had a friend who acted, acted like, like a, a dog. dog. Everyone or knew a kid, a that knew like a kid a who acted like a dog and said, or a horse. horse. And I said, okay, let's stop. And I paused the movie. And I said, first of all, no, I never knew a kid who acted like a dog. I mean, I did, so. And then, did you really? Yeah, like on the playground or whatever, who just like Is it John? Is it John? No. Kids are weird, man. (laughs) But yeah, the horse, no. But the dog, yes. And then I said, but we need to discuss this because you said a dog or a horse, (laughs) which leads me to believe you have a specific story about a horse person. Uh, Yeah. Do we just want to say that you did or do you actually want to tell this story? I can tell it real quick. I mean, she was weird. She's nice. And she was my friend, but she was a little weird. She had to like gallop slash canter everywhere, which you can't really do on two legs, but she tried (laughs) and was always like (laughs) pretending to be a horse on the playground. So. Even That's outside the playground, that was I insane. find it weird that you had no friends that like, I had weird acted friends, like but I don't animals remember. on the playground. I mean, I can't remember it like enough to where I went, "Oh, remember Jimmy the horse?" Like <laughs> I don't remember anything like that. But like, all right, yeah, yeah. I'm listen. Maybe I was that kid, and I just don't remember. Like, <laughs> you were, I, that's that, why you don't know. Anyone. I was. You the that's horse why kid. you don't know anyone. Yeah, you, you were, were that kid. Mm. You were the panther. Uh, but, yeah, but we talk here too. Thank you for choosing a cool animal and like. <laughs> going like the panther as opposed to like ryan the armadillo (laughs) uh but this is where we start talking to you about bruton's jiggle jiggle bruton is like the second in command to crom chrome who crom is the god from conan isn't it yeah chrome is like crone crone i'll get there no it's crone because it's not it is crone crone. so he's in charge of the pack and he's like leading them all like day and night, not really letting them rest, and the he's ones who are like jerk. the olders are falling yeah, behind. Yeah, he's basically just like it's it's he's Darwin. It's Darwinism to him. He's like if yes. you fall behind, then like well, they weren't meant to survive. But it's interesting to me because it's it's false Darwinism because the herd mentality we learn like there is a They're safety to be together. had in numbers. Yeah. Like there's a group thing like that. And I want to talk about Br- Bruton real quick because yes, he's a second in command. We he looks like they did a lot of stuff with him, made him kind of jiggly because it's like, look how cool this jiggle yeah. uh, tech we have is. Yeah. <laughs> Come to realize very quickly, Aladar starts protecting the older ones. And again, because he grew up with the lemurs and they all cared for one another, he has a very different mentality than this, like, we have to do what Crone says. And if, you know, if we lag behind, that's what it is. And that's our fate. You know, he he starts giving hope to these older dinosaurs and he starts trying to protect them and care for them which immediately Tara became yes. endeared to Alan. I do love older adult characters. Mm. Uh but then Nira when we're introduced to Nira at one point Oof. at one point we had to pause uh, the thing it was Zinni is trying. Zinni is trying to encourage Aladar to mate, and he's doing all of these like inappropriate, like hoot and hollers, basically cat calling Nira. Zinni is and the she, one doing that. Yes. Yeah, Zinni. and she has a sick burn and calls him a jerkosaurus. And Ryan said that the burn was so sick. <laughs> It That's ca- this type of burn that makes you go extinct. Yes. So that <laughs> there's, happened. There's a lot of like kind of modernism in this where they say stuff that's like 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 the like Zinni refers to them as primates and stuff like that where I'm like They wouldn't know that. Yeah, I would like I mean yeah. they wouldn't talk I, either, right? I know, but like I think it's more interesting to keep it kind of like timeless instead of like Jerkosaurus. Like mm, yeah. Jerkosaurus is a line that needed a second the writing, pass. The writing yeah. is yes. not great. Writing's not great. Sometimes. Yeah. Although I have to say the writing of uh, Ema, who's a, uh, can I say this, Styracosaurus. Yes, thank yeah. you. I remember there you go. that, yeah. Uh, her, her dialogue is fantastic. Yeah, and I love her. She's probably my favorite. I I think the story of this is pretty good, and there's a lot of big beats I like. But yeah, the writing, yeah, the, the individual, individual lines are yeah. rough. Yeah. 
And so this is where we walk by one of the first dinosaur corps. Uh, and they, because they're in the back of the herd and then the raptors go after it. And so that's kind of the motivation too. We have to keep moving because the raptors are following us, waiting for us to yep. either die or get weak enough to come at us. Now, I forgot to talk about this on the second go through, but there is that comedian I was talking about who does the bit of what's your favorite dinosaur. Oh yeah. And, and why they, that's wrong. And why that, and everyone yell, he gets people. It's so it's completely improv. I'm sure he's got like canned answers. And the one I remember him doing is someone who go Velociraptor. He's like, D- Jurassic Park is wrong. They're actually very small, and they felt a little more realistic. They in did this feel one. smaller yeah. in this yes. one than scale wise than when we see them in Jurassic Park. Yes, I want to say scale wise, Aladar's like the size of a horse, maybe slightly larger. In re- in real life or in I in this? I think in the movie. Well, what does Google have to say? <laughs> <laughs> who's who's this deep voice character? <laughs> <laughs> A bit larger than a horse, but not too yeah. much larger. You were saying you think you think they they model a lot of these after elephants. Yes, they did study elephants, um, especially in the case of baleen, who's the brachiosaurus. Baleen, yeah. Do you think they did horses for iguanodons? Yeah, for like the face and stuff like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And the musculature. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But this is also where we're introduced again to the carnotaurs. Yes. They come yes. back, and now we see that there's a pair of them. There's two of them, and so they're also kind of lagging behind trying to catch up to this herd to attack them. And Kron keeps saying, you know, we have to get over this hill. Once we do this, we'll get to the water and there'll be a lake. And then, you know, we've just got a little bit further to the mating, to the um, nesting nesting ground. ground. That's where they're trying to go is they usually would go to this nesting ground to have their babies and then they would come back. So that's where they're trying to get to. And they go over, and it's desolate and like basically tumbleweeds. We don't the, see the tumbleweeds, lake before, but the yeah. lake is gone, and so everyone is so defeated. And he just keeps pushing them through. He doesn't want them to rest. He wants them to keep going. And this is where the older dinosaurs in Alador they stay behind, and they're defeated. They're just like so sad and Baleen, well, and worn out. Yeah, yeah. and Baleen, because of her weight and how big she is, she kind of like steps down. And I don't know if it's the lemurs that notice it first or Aladar if they both notice at the same time. Um, And then they're like, wait, we hear something. And so if you push down far enough and dig, then the water comes up. So they get so excited. They get water. They're giving water to the older dinosaurs. Aladar tries to go and let the herd know. And then it had this very... uh, what Black am I Friday. To think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, um, <laughs> felt, not a, everyone not a, for themselves. Yeah, not yeah. a cult. What is? What am I trying to think? Herd, herd mentality. I guess no, it's herd it's mentality. It's, herd. it's not herd mentality. Yeah. So it's, yeah, yeah it's, herd mentality must be what I'm thinking. I cult was wrong, but that's what like came to mind for me, and I know that that's not the term right. I wanted to use. But yeah, this mentality, like you said, Marjorie, every every person for themselves, every dinosaur for themselves, and they basically all like stomp all over everybody just to get this little bit of water. Yeah. Um, and then we realized that they could have done that anywhere in that area. And or they could water. just work together and it would have yeah, been better and just for everyone. Wait. Exactly. But, yeah, because they were all um, just out for themselves and they would push and shove, especially the leader, like he was setting the example, Crone. Yeah. So I made a comment that I'm not going to repeat on the podcast, but. <laughs> yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so then we see Vera. He, Aladar helps the two, like, little kids who are, like, mm-hmm. younger, and they're trying, they're scared, and they haven't gotten water yet, and Zinni realizes that, and is like, they won't come out for me, I, they don't know what I am, can you come help them? And so Aladar helps them get water, and then this is where Nir is like, I see, like, kids. And so it kind of is like, it's, their chemistry is non-existent, yeah. but yeah. The, they start talking, and he starts asking. Nira could have liter- literally been voiced by like a text to speech program, and I think it would have been <laughs> yeah. the same amount of and chemistry. He just starts talking about, you know, why do you leave the older ones behind? And she goes, "Well, this is kind of the way, and this is this is why, and uh, you this survival of the fittest kind of mentality." And so the herd, you know, keeps moving, and they wind up getting left behind because of this. Mm. And Nira tries to stop her brother is the one in charge, Crone. Well, there's mm. a reason they suddenly up and moved from the lake, though. 
Oh, the what's it called? Bruton, Tom, another right? one got attacked. Bruton that's and, right, and his that's scout right. buddy, unnamed. and his scout thank buddy you, who got thank eaten. You. He was like very much the second, very visible, or th- maybe third, very visible corpse. Yes, right? yeah, that's yeah. right. I totally um, did not write that down, but yeah, we'll, he he gets obliterate it and then Bruton gets pretty badly hurt and this is where I wrote poor Bruton he comes back to let them know that the Carnotaur is like around and they have to be careful and Kron's like you let him write to us but I'm like he doesn't even yeah, know there's sucks. water there like Bruton like doesn't know that water existed there so he's hurt he's yeah. gotten no water and now he's told all right you have to get the herd up and and double time it like we got to book Kron it out of says here something like maybe you can feed him with your hide let's yes. go kind of thing and poor Bruton's just like ah, ah, okay so yeah. I, I have a real quick qu- so the carnotaurs don't have voices no. they're also kind of animalistic yeah. like Earl and like yeah, some of the, the other characters. And the raptors too. Yeah. Yeah. So Marjorie pointed out that there's a larger one and a smaller one, and she thinks that's a, a male female pairing. So I want us before the next time we have a Carnotaur sing to think about who you would want to voice them. Oh. If if they had um uh, if they both had a voice. So Okay. Just at the end when we do our When we get we get well maybe the next time they show up, we'll we'll okay. just be thinking about it. Okay. I already know who so... would voice the male one. Oh, when you got both of them, because okay. okay. I got mine. I have no idea. Because in my mind, they're voiced by the uh, Team Rocket on Pokemon. <laughs> I don't know why. Amazing. <laughs> That's just what I thought. Like, we're here. Like, like <laughs> Just this so dumb good. male, female pairing. Okay, anyway, sorry. So, uh, the herd basically leaves them in the dust, literally. Leaves them behind. And they wind up finding this cave. And I think it's Earl who finds the cave. Yes. I think Earl kind of comes upon the cave first. And so they all get in the cave and it's dark and it's starting to rain. And Bruton, like, they try to help him before they find the cave and he, like, wants none of it. And then he's out in the rain and Aladar's like, you need to come in from the rain. Like, come on, like, stop being a fool. And so they go in and they help him. And then this is where one of the lemurs, they found a plant in the cave that they had on the island that would make them feel better. So they give that to Bruton and they're like you know you're the only you've decided to give up but you don't have to and he thinks it's foolish that Aladar's giving them false hope and they're like well hope is what's gotten us this far I will say Bruton learns a lesson in this movie Kron does not yes Crone yeah Crone we'll Crone get it does not we'll get it by the end uh, I'm still not 100% sure you're right but I'll go with Crone <laughs> she's the one who's seen this movie way more times than us uh, yeah uh so so yeah so he does learn this lesson and you do feel for him in this moment because it's just like he's now seeing another way you can be uh and hasn't really seen this kind of good character development really yeah he really does because then what winds up happening is the carnotaurs find the cave and at first you're not sure they don't know that it's a cave because the way the water's falling over it almost looks like a waterfall and then they wind up hearing i think a rock drops and some other things happen yeah and they hear what i was gonna say does anybody have a a, a, their voices for the carnotaurs oh Oh, i do you guys share i don't because i can't do that while i'm talking about this okay for the male carnotaur keith david who's the voice of goliath yeah and the voice of Dr. Facilier. Oh, okay. Yes. And for the female Carnotaur, I would say Pat Carroll, who's the voice of Ursula. Oh. I think she'd be really good. I don't know if you could hear... I mean, I suggested a dumb just, answer, but I'm just saying, like, <laughs> I don't know if you could hear Pat Carroll and not think Ursula, but I think Keith David is very good. I'd almost All want right. someone more growly, like, deep, like... Let me... Okay, I've got two. Okay, who you got? Idris Elba. Oh, okay. So this is two thousand. So he was. Oh, is he too young? No, it just he would have been. It would have been right before the wire. So he'd be an easy get. So Idris Elba and Donna from Parks and Rec, but she would have. She might have these been are, too young. These are, these are both two people who I think are easy to get in two thousand. Mm-hmm. That's high pick. <laughs> Idris Elba. I would, wasn't thinking year wise. I was. Would just you thinking. want? Would you want? Um, deep. Would you want a uh, Baltimore Idris Elba or British Idris Elba? Not Elber. British, no. I so you want, want you want Stringer Bell is what you want. Yeah, but like with almost like a little growl to it. I feel like he could do that well because his voice is so deep. All right, I like these. All right. So, uh, <laughs> wait, what were yours? 
It was the the Team Rocket from Pokemon. Oh, 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 like legitimately. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I just like, no. I, I, I'll, let me think about it and I'll get back to it. All I right. Okay. So uh, they wind up coming in the cave. The rest of the dinosaurs wind up running. Aladar tries to hold them off. And this is where Bruton kind of comes in and saves the day. And he does sacrifice himself, essentially. He's like, I'll hold them off. You guys keep going. And he realizes if he starts knocking into the rocks, it can knock, it can kind of create almost like an avalanche. So that's how he's attacking them. And in the process, he winds up also getting trampled by these rocks. Yeah. And then they like. And they show. His yeah. like limp head like turns t- oh it's bad. very clear away that the rock and yeah just it like yeah it it reveals slash releases bruton's head I mean, we knew what is, was up he's dead and it's just a very limp like slide of his jaw open and it just kind of yeah it's yeah. another really intense it's very moment. graphic actually you, yes you, and you thinking about seeing this on the big screen oh well know? here's the other thing is these the, moments. the cave scenes were also very dark yes and I will also say that there was a scene where the Carnotaur can't see it with it's dark and the lightning flashes, and mm-hmm. that felt the most like that like stupid the ride. ride. Yeah. <laughs> so You're like, that we was do. Me. Re- <laughs> yeah, we realize that one of the Carnotaurs survives out of the two. Yes. One survives, and so they keep going, and they realize that there's a dead end in the cave, and it cuts back to the herd at one point, and you see Nira saving the little ones like. Aladar did with the older ones. Mm-hmm. Now she's starting to get that mentality of looking after the herd more than just thinking about herself. Eartha Kit as the female Carnotaur. Okay. Like not doing Isma, not doing Isma, yeah. but doing like a dark kind no, of. No, like I didn't have that. like a deep enough voice, but I did think. But about I think she her. could do raspy, and I think that'd be. I don't know. Yeah, she would be good though. She'd be. I think yeah, she'd, she'd be a good she's choice. A solid. Solid mm-hmm. choice. I like Keith David. I think Keith David and Eartha Kid are the yeah are my call. I know I'm stealing yours. <laughs> I feel bad that I'm casting uh, African American. I know. I feel like we all guy. did. Well, I will say this but had a I was very more very of, like I was thinking like deeper voices and those are just no. The I think you're right. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To me at first, um, but I will say this is a very diverse cast. Oh, there's okay. a like. Well, do we want Alfred... to wait to talk about that? We always. I mean, we just we we'll just put it in here. Alfre Woodward okay. is is the mom. Uh, Ozzie Davis is the grandfather. Like it's all a lot of African American uh, actors playing a lot of these roles. So. Yeah. So they get to, um, we see kind of Nira. Like I mentioned, she's now kind of adopting this mentality that uh, Aladar has, and we get back to them in the cave, and there's a dead end in the cave. And Aladar gets just so frustrated and so angry and basically gives up. And this is where I said the lemurs are like the camels with the mammoths that we were talking about because Mm -hmm. they see things that the dinosaurs can't see and they realize that there's light through some of those rocks and that they, if they work together, they can figure it out. And so that's kind of what happens. Aladar gives up. Baleen has a really good monologue in that. Yes, she has a really good moment there where she's like, She might be MVP for me for this whole movie. She's also really great. Yeah. But he she basically says, you know, you gave this old dinosaur a purpose. Like you made me feel wanted. You made me feel need it. And like, I'm not going to stop. an interesting now. way. She's like, I refuse to. Stop yeah, I refuse to that. just yeah. die. Yeah. yeah no. Awesome. It's so great. And so they all attack these rocks. And then my next note is, yeah, with like eight exclamation marks because the rocks <laughs> open up and they are at the nesting ground. And it has that very triumphant moment like in Jurassic Park when mm-hmm. we see Jurassic Park for the first time. I said that lake looks like the lake from the, the, the like you they when they reveal the dinosaurs to the, the sunglasses scene. Yes, yes, them yes, off. yes. Yeah. Uh, it has a very similar like feeling attached to it too when you see this after all that they've been through uh and this is where we talked about earl and the futures of the dog but we kind of already went into that uh (laughs) and then they realize that the way that the herd is coming they're never going to make it in because all of these rocks have formed and it's a basically a giant mountain and it's yeah uh, when they climb even if drop yeah, even if they could just, climb to the top, yeah. there'd be no way for them to get over it. And so Aladar says, well, I'll go back the way we came and I'll I'll get everybody to come. And they're basically like, Kron's never going to... Kron? Kron. Kron. I did it too. Kron. Kron is never going to... <laughs> he's never going to listen to you. And he goes anyway. And so he comes 
lets them all know. And as we see, Crone is trying to force all these dinosaurs to climb Really, like, up. push Very the little kids. Yeah. yeah. He's Crone like, sucks. the kids are strong. They can do it. If they Say can do it, it you can do it. I've said it my whole life. Crone sucks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so that that's a really intense moment. Then Aladar comes in and he's like, you led the Carnotaur right to us. And he's like, no, like if we leave now, like we can get around it. We can get to the cave. Like I'm telling you, this is how it has to be. And then they get into this pretty epic fight. And that's when I remember that Iguanodons have those like spike thumbs. Yeah. Yeah. Because I remember like a reason I liked Iguanodons as a kid is there's a book I had. It looked like it was going like, hey, and like given like two, (laughs) like it didn't, like it wasn't drawn cartoonishly, but just the way it was positioned, it looked like it was like two thumbs up. Yeah. And it's, they have those spikes on them. Yeah. So they, they uh, basically get into this fight and Nira gets into the middle and Nira stands up for Aladar, which really throws Crone off. He was not expecting that to Mm. happen. And then the 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 Carnotaur comes in and they all go to scatter and Aladar's like, no, if you scatter, he's going to pick us off one by one. Like, we need to stay stronger. We're stronger together. Yeah, he says stand together. Yeah, and they all start basically roaring, Mm -hmm. shouting at him. And or her, I don't know which one. I think the think smaller one survives, so probably the male. So probably the male. So they do all get around him, but then you've got <laughs> dumb dumb crone still trying to climb the mountain, and he's now by himself and very easy to just be picked off by this carnotaur. And then Alador and Nira both fight off the carnotaur to try to save Crone and High Cliff Death. For the Carnotaur here. Disney. Classic another, Disney. <laughs> well, yes. Also, and Crone another really intense too. moment. And then when they go up to Crone, they realize that he well, is no longer alive the, either. The Carnotaur is intense because they look over the side and then the camera shows a dead body down yeah, there. Yeah, like, with okay. the rocks and everything. Like, we, yeah. we get it. Like, no yeah. one's confused what's going on here. What corpse was, that yeah. was corpse number five. And yeah. Then Crone, and then Crone was six. six. Was number yeah, six. Crone was Spoiler six. Spoiler alert. <laughs> yes. Uh, and so... Everyone then follows, and then the next shot is all of them at the nesting ground. Yeah, and then it place. cuts to later, and that white hot chemistry has <laughs> turned into a a, a long uh, a relationship. But we were a little worried about the longevity of that relationship because you know the the candle that burns brightest burns the shortest. Is all I'm saying. <laughs> I liked uh, what's her name had a good line here. Bringing in babies is what I do best. Oh, it's Ema, and then she's going to sit on. Yeah, and then she's going to sit head. on the lemur to practice, and then the the egg hatches, and the dinosaur pees, and then he's like, "Oh yeah, you're Alador, <laughs> Aladar's kid." So the pee joke comes. And back. then everyone howls, does their little dinosaur the, thing, yeah, and then the Zidi has, has the Lion King moment. Zidi has a harem. Yes. yes, and we don't know how I, that I, I figure. Zeddy. I figure. No, I'm calling him Zidi. <laughs> Um, so then more, I figure like this was a meeting spot for more survivors. So that Probably, would be my yeah, guess. like over time, more animals. And that just shows you there. the lack of male lemurs that are available in this place that <laughs> he's become the hot commodity. But we do see that, uh, you know, that very famous Jurassic Park line. Life uh, 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 finds, finds a way. way. That's what yeah. you said. Essentially, that's what we see in this last shot is all of the different species of animals are having babies, are thriving. Again, there's water. Where there's water, there's yes. life. So it's like, you know, this is all happening. Fire represents life. <laughs> on the uh, island. On the island. <laughs> we're watching Survivor. <laughs> Currently, we're, oh, gosh. we just got into Survivor some 20 years later yeah. after it came out. And we're like in season five. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, uh, but that's the end of the movie. No, she has that really like kind of uh, that line because it's like, look at all this life that's happening. And then she's like, oh, yeah, when we die, we can only help to be remembered. And it was like, all right. <laughs> like, why yeah. we, well, like, you thought it was more positive. I thought it was dark. I thought it was more how it is like yeah. but i didn't need like a fatalistic line at the, <laughs> at end, the of end yeah this disney true. movie that just showed all like the babies being born like yeah and in the end nothing matters we're all dead yeah. goodbye enjoy oh, your ride home at all. it's like <laughs> if you're remembered then you're immortal right then you're yeah. living past but yeah i guess that's true how was the princess so as we've determined on this podcast the oh, princess right is the uh, main protagonist. So Aladar. so Aladar would be the princess. I actually Wait, really liked Aladar. Okay. It's it's the main protagonist is oh, the princess. Okay. It has, we don't conform to gender norms here on Taryn Ryan's Princess hey, Diaries. Yeah, I'm all right with that. Anybody can be uh, a princess. That's so um, 
Aladar would be the princess in this case, yeah, I think. I liked Aladar a lot. I feel like he stood up for those who yeah. were weaker. I feel like he tried to give a voice, and I don't know. I enjoyed his character. Good Again, person, Dynasty. I, yeah. so, I think I was ready to not like him because of the scenes I saw. Because the next question, how was the prince? And the prince in this prince case would be near. She was, she was white fine. Toast. White dry toast. <laughs> she was fine in the scenes without Eladar. I mean, I, I gotta be honest, Marjorie. I think that's giving her a lot of credit she doesn't deserve. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and that I mean, she she came in that day, read her lines, and was animated. Like. Yeah, which is is such a such a disappointment because that actress is wonderful. Yeah. So it's really a disappointment good. that like. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Just for whatever reason, I don't know if she read the lines alone, and maybe that had something to do with it. She had one good scene, and that's when like her voice cracks because she's like yelling, but she's yelling crone like when. The Carnotaur was coming after him. Oh, there was real yeah. urgency in that. Her voice cracked. I yeah. felt it. One good moment. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, okay. Um, how, <laughs> how how was the sidekicks and the henchmen? So I think we all really liked uh, the older dinosaurs. The dinosaur like Earl and yeah, yes, Earl and Beautiful. yes, and Baleen, Baleen, Baleen and Ema, and Ema. Ema. Mm-hmm. Um, the l- lemurs were. You know, take or leave it. I like the mom lemur. Yes, uh, she's yeah. I Alfred feel like Woodward. there were some good moments with the lemurs. There are some we'd like to leave out, but I think once they become part of the dinosaur herd, I think we and the the very beginning moments yeah. with the lemurs. I think those were strong points. The dynamics with, with the lemurs and the older dinosaurs are really good. Yes. Mm. Um, favorite musical number. Now I know this one didn't really have any musical numbers. We talked a little bit about the music. I got kind of emotional at the, this, the, when they're trying to break down the wall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like the music there was kind of like, so good. It it Mm -hmm. wasn't like, it wasn't, it was, it was still making it like it, it made the scene more intense. Like I was like, Oh, are they going to do it? I think the music about survival. I think the music did its job and enhanced Mm -hmm. a lot of scenes, especially the ones where there were the strong emotions, very, depending on what was going on with the story. Very cinematic, very full orchestra feel. Yeah. Like, it's good stuff. Um, Female character, this is Does It Hold Up? Female character agency. I did not like Nira. I mean, she just, it wasn't even like she was a bad female character. She's just a bad character. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I but, did like the older women dinosaurs, yes. though. Yes. They have I've, wonderful agency. Yes. yes. Uh, I enjoyed them quite a bit. Yeah, Nira had nothing going for her but. Mm. and the mom the mom lemur i feel like i like she her okay, wasn't I'm as strong sure. as the yeah. older dinosaurs but i think she had a couple moments because her there. arc was just there i think the, the i think ema and baleen had like legit arcs yeah yeah uh drinking and smoking ethnic representation <laughs> i i think this is a much more uh, as far as we talk about voice voice acting, acting it was much goes. more on guns and firearms you know, obviously those are things they don't have but we did but talk we did about have meteors so <laughs> we did to the, it's nature's firearms nature's uh, firearm. <laughs> <laughs> so i think we uh we covered kind of like if you've got kids be careful with this and one it's there, pretty and intense. the triggering moments of if you've lived through a disaster of, yes of m- many different kinds there's blood there's some gore that's true. Yes. Yeah. These are, well, there's a little blood. I know gore, gore to me you is see, like, like the you see when skeleton. the carnotaurs and when the carnotaurs eat the other dinosaurs. I feel like yeah. you see a little you, bit yeah, you if saw, you're like, like watching the them. Mouth. Yeah, I was probably remembering the ride and the, probably. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so, of course, you're familiar with this: the infallible scientific mm. uh, villain ranking. And I guess so. Are we just ranking them as a? As a duo, as one? Yeah, I would just say Carnotaur okay. in general, or the Carnotaurs. So, frightening. Uh, I'm going to do five. Yeah. Uh, they were very they frightening. Were really scary. They're, they're, yes. The shot where he, they did a couple shots in the dark where he was like, especially when he's like coming out from under the, the, the water. The water and the lightning. Yeah, those moments. And in the very beginning, they let yeah. you know who the villain is of besides the meteor. Um, yeah. They let you know. <laughs> are we going to rank them? The meteor. <laughs> Uh, but they let you know, yeah, Yeah. they let you know pretty early on, like almost immediately who these dinosaurs are going to be running from, you know, trying to avoid. So fives across the board. Yeah. Yeah. Especially like, because the Carnotaurs have this move a lot of times where they just kind of like lunge and then drag whatever they've got back with them. Yeah. When when they, when they they drag drag... Alador at one point. Yeah. Yeah. 
Sorry, when you say dragged Aladar. Alador. When you say Alador. dragged Aladar, I imagine them being like, ooh, that that shirt, you know, like <laughs> they're they're reading yeah, him. Yeah, they're reading him. <laughs> um, um funny, I'm gonna put one. Yeah, I'd do a zero if not, I could. Not funny at all. Uh fierce. So fierce usually has to do with kind of an attitude or a little bit of a sassiness. I don't think they were that fierce. I'll give them a two because I feel like in like the kingdom of like the jungle, in the dinosaur I mean, kingdom. They're like an intense creature. I don't know that we... Okay. I too. Because there's like moments where they'll turn, like when the big one was crushed and the little one got out, it turned back and it was like, ah, I'll get you. Yeah. I'm going to give them a one. Okay. Uh, Effective. Now, this one's hard because typically effective has to do with the... Their end goal. Their end game. And their end game is just to eat. And they got to eat a few times. They got to eat. We saw six corpses. Yeah. And I think four or five of them were them. Yeah, but I don't think they had like a, a superior master plan. We've kind of been trying to in, in put that into this. Like, I think their master can, plan was to survive. Yeah, and to survive, and they was they for didn't. Them, yeah, it was yeah. for yeah. them to eat everything. So I'd give them like a a, a a three, a two or a three. I'm giving them a four. Okay. Yeah. I think they were very four. effective at like their four job because they did okay. kill off quite a, quite a few characters. Yeah, I'm giving and them a three. I feel like they established that you didn't know who was going to die in this film. It had very much like, yes, it was a Disney movie, but I didn't know which main characters were going to make it to the end. Yeah, and to be fair, I don't think any Disney villain ever really succeeds. Uh, Ursula was queen of the the ocean the for yeah, uh, died. five minutes. Brief moment. Uh, five minutes, she was the queen of the sea. She is she is the best villain. Okay, design. Uh, this is a four, or maybe uh, for me, because I thought I think you know it's easy enough to have it just be a, a tyrannosaur, but I think trying to like yes. find something that hadn't really been seen at this point was mm-hmm. kind of cool. And they differentiated between the two, right? Didn't one of them? One of them was they bigger did. than the other one, and did they have specific features? That you were said different? one of them had like a curly horn. I didn't yeah, really the, notice the that. The large but... one had kind of like a weird twisty horn. Yeah, so I'll give them a four because I feel like there was a lot of thought put into not only them, but the design of the film mm-hmm. as a whole. So, yeah. uh, Marjorie, you give them a four as well? Yeah, I really, I liked them. All right, go away heat. Uh, they're going to get a little bit of go away heat for me simply because of the time on the ride. So they're... I had some go away heat going into it. <laughs> yeah, I think I want to give them, I want to give them a three or a four, I feel like. Mm, I'm giving them a, t- I, I think you're being a little, so I, some, I think. I think you get really excited about any movie we watch after we watch it. And you're like, oh, this is this. All right. I'll give them a three. Okay. I would say two or three for me because one, they're a delight to watch because of the animation, right? But like they make me physically tense up. Yeah. Like I'm very uncomfortable when I see them because I know something bad's going to happen. But that's not necessary. I don't know. The go away heat to me is just how much they suck. Like, like, oh, so I guess uh, Crone. I would want Crone want to Cr- have a five. And I think I have more go away heat for the choice of this movie to show a lot of dead dinosaurs than I do actually. <laughs> All the right. You've talked me into it too. You've talked okay. me into it Yeah. 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 That makes sense. Two's across the board, or yeah, do you want to do a three yeah. still, Marjorie? Two's good. Um and yes factor they had no yes, no factor, yes factor for me. I wasn't excited going into to this see them. like yes. I yeah <laughs> yeah I I like them all right now but going into it they weren't for me. Did you yeah. have any yes factor going into this, Marjorie? I, what um before I saw the film yeah yeah, yeah. so you, what do you wanted to give them like a two I or three? I love dinosaurs so I give them at least a three. Okay, we're gonna give the Carnotaurs a three for Marjorie for the dinosaur bump is what we're gonna call that one. <laughs> um, so I'm let's biased. take a. Let's take a look. They have scored a 19. All right. Let's where see where that, that puts them. them. Oh, they're that's to- actually, they're right with man from Bambi, which I think is a good place for them. That actually makes sense. Yeah, it does make sense. They're tied with man. They're the they're one of the ultimate predators of their time. Yeah. Here we go. I think that's a, actually wow. a real... I'm always surprised that this list like really does even out. It's interesting. I think there's some issues with it, but uh, like Prince John. Um, but oh, Ryan will forever, forever <laughs> be upset Prince about John. Prince John not ranking higher. So we've got the final question, and that is, do we add this uh, movie to our collection or do we lock it away in the vault? Those are the two options, Tara. There's no, no third option. I have a drawer. You just don't know about it. It's like it. you're. It, I do know about it's it. Like it's just like your drawer. candy drawer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Where you hide all your candy from me. Um, I, I, I will say I have a hard place with this because I don't know that I'd watch this one again anytime soon. 
personally, but like again, I enjoyed it way better. I I wouldn't have a problem putting it in my collection because I'm rich. I'll buy another. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I don't have a problem putting it in my collection, but I I feel like it'd be kind of towards the end, just be like, hey, you should check this out. Yeah. How about you, Marjorie? Uh, so I <laughs> want to bias again, <sighs> but aside from that, like in terms of just the animation and the significance of this film to a lot of things that came after it, yeah. And I have, I owned the VHS of it, I bought the DVD of it, and then I have a digital version of it now, so yeah, it's definitely yeah. in my collection. Yeah, it's in your collection. In your I collection. would, I would say it goes on the shelf for me for the reasons that Marjorie listed. I think there are just some really beautiful, amazing moments in this film. It This wouldn't be like a, oh, I'm going to go sit down and watch Dinosaur today. Like, I don't know that I would have that, because I don't have the nostalgia or like, the super excitement. I like dinosaurs, but not compared to the two of you like dinosaurs. So I don't have that to it, but I do agree that it did some really amazing things. And we're what, 20, 21 years later. Mm -hmm, And mm -hmm. I think a lot of it does hold up. And I think for that alone, it needs to have a place. Uh, Marjorie, thank you so much for uh, uh, guesting again on this Thanks on this your me. your second or third episode, whichever <laughs> two point five. Consider, <laughs> two point five <laughs> episodes. Um, as you may remember, uh, we always ask our guests to plug something, whether it's a personal project, uh, a piece of media maybe they've been enjoying lately, or uh, something just a sentiment they want to put out there in the world. Uh, Marjorie, feel free to plug away. Yeah, so um, November's coming up. Um, there's a thing that happens in terms of charity uh, uh, and video games called Extra Life. That's extra-life.org. Um, you can participate, be a runner. You can go and donate. Um, it's People play video games for 24 hours f- uh, for Children's Network, Miracle Network Hospitals. So check it out. It's awesome. And uh, Are you playing this year? I might be, but I'm not sure yet. <laughs> yeah. But if I am, I'll, I'll plug that even. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We have a friend. We have a friend locally who I think I d- he does I, it every I year. I donate every year, like yeah, a lot. So it's it's pretty. That's awesome. great. It's for the kids. I don't. Know, I've often thought about being a runner, but I don't know if there's anything I want to do for 24 hours. <laughs> Maybe podcasting. Oh my god. Hey. But anyway, yeah. Tara's like, you can do that on your own. It's like, cool, cool, cool. Um, but. Uh, guys, uh, thank you so much for listening. Uh, our next movie is The Emperor's New Groove. Yeah! Ooh. Speaking of Eartha Kit. Yeah, there we go. That's so uh, be on the lookout for that, uh, and uh, we'll see you next time. All right, take care, listeners. Thanks for listening to Tara and Ryan's Princess Diaries. If you want to tell us your favorite Disney villain and why it's guest on, send us an email at trprincessdiaries at gmail.com. Or you can send a tweet about how great Maleficent is, too, at TRP Diaries. Check out our Facebook group by searching for Tara and Ryan's Princess Diaries. Tara and Ryan's Princess Diaries are available on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, Overcast, and many more. Wherever you hear us, please be our knight in shining armor and give us a five-star review. Thanks again, and until next time, remember to always live happily ever after. Uh